When dealing with dynamic simulations, it's not uncommon to use a standard particle or thinking particle emitter to emit dynamic objects. Whether you're creating falling cubes, raining gnomes, or capsules filling a bottle, using an emitter to generate the objects allows you to control the stream with relative ease. Let's take a look at this setup and see what kind of challenges it poses. Here we have a standard scene where a standard particle emitter is emitting capsules as dynamic objects. Let's play and see what happens. As you can see, they are filling this glass. The emission stops at 150 and there we go at the end of our simulation. Now the problem here is that if we try and scrub, it doesn't work because the particles need to be calculated in real time, so to speak. The solution to this would be to rewind, go to your project settings from the edit menu project settings or command D or control D on your PC and go to the dynamics tab and go to the cache sub tab and click bake. After merely a few seconds you will see that the simulation plays properly and we can scrub. But look what happens if we go forward and pass 150. It seems to be going well, but if I go backwards now, the simulation vanishes. If I go before 150 and go forwards again, it works. But this is a very minor glitch that can be somewhat annoying. In the following videos, I'll show you a method that not only solves all these issues, but allows you to do fancy stuff with your emitter geometry as well. It involves a cloner and the MoGraph cache tag. Now, just in case you didn't know how to set up a dynamic particle emitter, the next couple of videos will show you precisely how to do that.